In 2014, I decided I wanted to get super lean, attempt to look super jacked, paint myself brown, and step on stage in front of over 100 people. In 2014, I decided I wanted to do an NPC bikini competition. So these competitions typically require women to lose relatively a lot of body fat in a short amount of time. Me personally, I lost about 20 pounds in about six weeks. And it's safe to say that my body wasn't exactly happy because I experienced what I now know is hypothalamic amenorrhea or an absence of a menstrual cycle for three consecutive consecutive months or more. And in my case, it took me about a year to get it back. Now, you don't need to do a bikini show to get hypothalamic amenorrhea, which will shorten to HA because hypothalamic amenorrhea is a mouthful. And from the research on HA, losing a lot of weight or eating super low calories is the main factor to trigger HA, but it's not the only culprit. I spoke to HA expert and author of No Period, Now What? Dr. Nicola Rinaldi about the other factors that can cause HA. I think that the main factor is underfueling, so not eating enough to support all of the activities that your body is doing. That alone can lead to amenorrhea. If you're underfueling, probably there's some weight loss involved. But then even more so if there's a combination of underfueling and stress, so stress hormones from mental stress or um, when you exercise, especially high intensity exercise, that increases your stress hormones, so cortisol and other hormones like that. So oftentimes it's a combination of underfueling fueling plus exercise plus maybe some mental stress. We discussed how HA is commonly experienced by women who are involved with a sport or hobby that involves leanness, like ballet, figure skating, and of course, physique competitions, which is why HA associated with athletes is closely related to the female athlete triad, which includes consuming really low calories, low mineral bone density, and losing your period. And while the literature reports that HA affects about three to 5% of women, I imagine the percentage shoots up when looking at female physique competitors. So I wanted to get some input from physique coach and natural bodybuilder Paul Ravella, who has coached many female competitors prepare for the stage. For the most part, female competitors in today's current environment for competition are going to lose their menstrual cycle at some point. I would say it's probably less than 10% that actually keep their menstrual cycle all the way through prepping and competing. The competitors are getting leaner than ever and thus preps are lasting longer and so the process of getting lean is having more of an impact on hormone levels. They are going to lose their menstrual cycle in most cases. Now granted, not everyone is a physique athlete or prima ballerina, which is important to note because any woman is susceptible to losing their cycle, especially if they fall prey to eating too little calories, undergoing too much strenuous exercise, Size, are chronically stressed, or maybe just have a genetic predisposition for it. And I'm sure you've seen it or done it yourself. Today, I'm gonna start a diet. And in that moment, a crash diet begins and calories are cut way too low. But another thing to note is that starting a crash diet, even though you haven't reached a low body fat yet, can still result in losing your period due to that severe caloric restriction. And it's a misconception that you have to be super lean just to lose your period. It's actually a really important point that HA can happen no matter what your body size. So many doctors will look at a woman and say, oh, you know, that's not your problem. You look fine. But you might be thinking, sweet. I don't have to get my period. That sounds amazing. I don't have to suffer from cramps or buy tampons. Why is that such a bad thing? Well, as with most things in life, if it sounds too good to be true, it most likely is. Maybe you can touch on some of the other like really important side effects of not having a menstrual cycle. The hormones that are involved in your menstrual cycle, particularly estrogen and progesterone, but probably some of the other ones as well, are heavily involved in your bone density. Especially for somebody in her teens, that is the time during which your bones are gaining a huge amount of density that has to serve you for the rest of your life. I cannot stress enough how important it is to have a real honest to goodness menstrual cycle when you're in your teens and your 20s. Read some stories about women with osteoporosis so that you can really understand the full impact later on in your life. There's also suggestions that it can lead to earlier heart disease, earlier dementia. And then there are also sort of more near-term health consequences. Um, HA can lead to problems with digestion, it can lead to problems with your immune system, obviously brittle hair and nails, something I mentioned before, being cold all the time. So if you lose your period, how do you get it back? From my chat with Dr. Rinaldi, who's helped hundreds of women get their periods back, it seems the easiest and simplest way is, well, you gotta eat. There's this idea that we, we need 2000 calories a day, mm -hmm. but that's actually based on um, self-reported data. So it's not, um, you know, and people tend to under-report what they're eating. When they've done studies that actually measure 
measure somebody's metabolism directly, they find that it's much closer to 2,500 calories a day for a woman who is sort of generally active, you know, getting some walking through the day, that, that kind of thing. If you are truly committed to rescuing your cycle, she recommends jumping up to at least 2,500 calories a day and cutting back or altogether eliminating intense bouts of exercise. And if you've been restricting your calories and training really intensely for a long time, yes, you will gain some weight, which is kind of the point. But granted, this may not be the appropriate route for everyone. So I asked Coach Ravella how he instructs his clients who are dealing with HA after their competitions with their caloric intake. So how I handle a client post-show is very individual. I will have my suggestions, but for those clients that lose their cycle, if their priority post-show is to get their cycle back as quickly as possible, we will make a rapid increase to calories and be okay with putting on a little bit of body fat in order to get that cycle back and to get their hormones working in a normal order. This is quite commonly a request for my clients and that's exactly what we do. What's most important for the competitor is the psychology, okay? So as a coach, I don't treat everyone the same. The goal as a, as a coach and as a competitor should be to come up with a plan that works best for you. If I was to tell a client that they need to gain a lot of weight quickly and get their hormones back, but it left them in an unhappy place, that would be a fail, okay? And this, just like if I decided I really wanted to slowly reverse them out of a show only to find out that their goal was just to get their calories back up and their body fat back up so they would get their hormones returned to normal, well, that would be a fail. But if you are eating more and still no luck, you gotta stop the intense training, specifically HIIT training or high intensity interval training. HIIT training has been shown to be a bigger risk factor for HA due to the fact that HIIT training raises cortisol levels much more than low steady state cardio like walking. And I know for athletes out there, it's not easy to just accept putting on more fat, eating a higher calorie diet, and reeling back your training, but you really have to evaluate what is really important to you and your long-term health. I myself have fallen victim to living in the now and not being able to visualize my older self, but as I have gotten older, I have really prioritized future older Stephanie, and I hope she isn't mad at her younger self. And another point of confusion is the difference between HA and PCOS, which can also stop your menstrual cycle. So if you guys are interested, I will probably do an entirely separate video covering PCOS. And please make sure to check out the description box for all of the information on how to contact Dr. Nicola Rinaldi if you are interested in her counseling services, as well as links to her Facebook support groups, information-packed blog, and her book, No Period, Now What? I also get a lot of questions if I myself am an online fitness coach, and unfortunately I'm not, but I highly recommend Paul Ravella if you are looking for someone who can help you lose weight in the healthiest way possible. So I'll leave all of his contact information in the description box as well. So I really hope that you guys enjoyed this video and learned something. It would mean the world to me if you could give it a big thumbs up so I know that you like informative content from me. And if you know anyone struggling with HA, please share it with them because it's hard to deal with losing your period when you've been trying to get it back and you just don't know how. Thank you guys so much for watching. Until next time, bye.